All right, guys, so this is a uh, necrotic wake that we did end up timing. We two-chested it. Uh, the week's affixes for this were uh, tyrannical, storming, sanguine, and, of course, encrypted, which is the season three seasonal affix in Shadowlands. Um, this will be a holy priest POV. Uh, we actually tried to do the 20 <laughs> right before this, and uh, the DPS failed at killing the worms quickly enough, and they exploded, killing us all um, on the first boss. So uh, we're coming back in to do the 19. Um, this group is mostly a pug. Um, our group is a balanced druid, survival hunter, and a frost mage. Myself, a holy priest, and um, our guardian druid tank. Um, so we do a, a little bit of a bigger pull here. Um, you know, these most of these guys are pretty harmless. Uh, you want to make sure that the corpse harvester, they will cast uh, drain fluids that encas incapacitate someone uh, for its entire duration. So you want to make sure to get interrupts or stuns on that. Uh, otherwise, it really can uh, take somebody out of the fight. Um, I'm casting Boon here, which is the Kyrian Covenant ability. Uh, it does some healing, but honestly, it's a DPS cooldown. So uh, try to use it only when your group seems to be mostly safe. The Vanguard here also casts a thing called Meat Shield, as you can see. Um, it does put a shield on the target, and uh, you want to try to make sure to stun that as well. Um, or interrupt that so you know you don't you don't want to have to DPS through that either as you can see um, I did get the uh, the hammer over there uh, the weapon strategy especially on tyrannical is pretty important um, what we tend to do I always grab the first hammer the first spear and the first orb one DPS then we'll grab the second hammer over by the mini boss before the bridge and then the second spear it's pretty important that you grab them in this order um so that you have them when you need them and then our tank we have him grab the orb the hammer and the spear the last three um, our strategy typically is on the first boss here, we use Bloodlust and the uh, Goliath Kyrian Exhaust, um, which you need to access by having a Kyrian. Uh, you use your little guy to, to talk to the robot. He'll activate, and you can get a bunch of balls. Um, it increases damage and healing when you're grouped up pretty significantly, so you'll see me doing that here. We don't use any weapons on this boss at all, just the Kyrian Exhaust and Bloodlust. Grabbing some soldiers while we wait for that to activate. Booning again. Um, Boon interacts really well with the Ur buff, which uh, increases your CDR by 200% while it's up. And then that interaction with uh, the mechanic Mechanicus uh, conduit, as well as the Kyrian Legendary, will allow you, if timed correctly, to get quite a bit of boons. Sometimes as many as one every pull, although that depends on having an Ur in the previous pack. Uh, but you can get quite a bit of use out of that if you're timing it correctly with your Ur. So we are killing this boss here. Um, pretty simple mechanics, you know, don't stand in the green stuff. Point your spit away from your group. Kill the worms, most important thing. If you get bit by the worms, kind of all over. So you want to try to avoid that. Um, as you can see, I'm getting another boon off. Never going to out damage those carrying weapons, though, you know what I mean? See, uh... Our boomkin here, unfortunately, uh, got the whole group with that. So, not the greatest. That's something you want to try to avoid doing for sure. Um, always trying to keep flash concentration up at all five stacks. It's a huge mana sink. 
uh, if you have to hard cast flash heal uh, five times to get that buff up. But, you know, if you have to move or something's happening and you lose your stacks, try not to stress about it too much. The world is not going to end. Um, uh, we've got two druids, so we, we were pretty lucky we had two vortexes we were able to use. Uh, it's great for CCing those worms so they can get killed before they bite anybody. And see, that was much better. He was the only one that got hit by it. We are just CCing those worms. Blightbone is almost dead here. Uh, so we really can focus boss as we kind of kite away from the worms. You can see our Frost Mage is uh, CCing them over there. They are slowed. Honestly, under two and a half minutes for a tyrannical boss fight, not bad. Not bad. Grab this middle pack here. A lot of times we do pull this with the boss, but since it is sanguine, not ideal. It's very easy for the boss to get healed doing this. Uh, if you are smarter than our group, feel free to go for it. Uh, but especially in a pug, it, it it's not the greatest strat, and it's totally unnecessary on a keyless level. Um, it's, it's easily timeable not pulling them into the boss. That vanguard uh, tried to get that meat shield off there, but you can see our druid bashed it. Trying to squeeze in as much damage as possible. Refreshing my flash concentration stacks as we move on to this next pack. What we like to do here, uh, we like to kill Woe for the invis skip, and then we skip all the way across the bridge to the Marauders. Um, you can activate the Goliath buff, and you can also grab the orb while invis. You just have to make sure that you're not in range, because it does cause you to drop the Woe invisibility. Uh, but the minute you complete your action, it does pick it back up. So... Um, it is possible, just make sure that you're cognizant to not be standing on top of a mob when you do something like that. Woe does have an ability called Burst that needs to be interrupted. Uh, we did miss one there, and of course this Corpse Harvester is going to stand in that and try to cast. A little annoying, but uh, our Druid Typhooned him out. You can see I'm going up here, I'm calling my steward, getting the buff, and I'm not in range of those, the sorcerer and the bone carver there. Waiting to get the balls, grabbing them, zooming through here, getting the first orb. See it makes me drop invis, but then picks it right back up. And then I come all the way through here. making sure that the DPS grab that spear and that hammer. The, uh, you can see the mage got aggro there, uh, but he invised. So there's a few things you can do there. Um, I could have mind soothed uh, those mobs. They're a little painful to target. I think I need to figure out a different uh, configuration for my threat plates in there because they do overlap the uh, the relics there, which is a little bit of a pain. Or you can have somebody that can drop threat instantly. So a mage or a hunter, rogue, um, are great choices for grabbing them with the woe because 
when they do inevitably pull aggro getting that hammer, they can just drop right away. Feign death, invisibility, etc. Probably should have gotten that a little earlier, but... Want to make sure to not pull the pat. Divine Star is an absolutely amazing <laughs> healing and DPS ability. It is not target capped, so try to use that on cooldown. It is a pretty big chunk of your damage. I am uh, kindly reminding our tank to not forget the hammer after he goes over here and pulls this, so he starts kiting backwards to make sure he is getting that very vital hammer for the last boss shields. Getting another boon off, of course, trying to make sure to not get tank slammed. One thing to note when you jump over this, if you are Kyrian, if Brawn is out, uh, he has been known to pull that pack that we are skipping. Uh, so to be extra safe, if you do have that Soulbind and Brawn is active, just click that off. There's a little kind of Kyrian buff uh, on, your, on your buff bar, buff screen, that will show you that he's out. And if you just right click that, uh, Brawn's call to action, I believe it's called, he will... He will leave, he will leave us and not pull those extra mobs that will most certainly wipe you, or at the very least, cause way too much time. Um, as you can see, I have the, uh, the mage shackled and our hunter also CC'd the crossbow. And the mages are particularly difficult. They do cast Frostbolt Volley and it hurts quite bad. Uh, so they really should be interrupted or CC'd, if at all possible. I've personally found that CC'ing on this boss is extremely helpful, but it can be sometimes difficult in pugs um, at key levels like this. Just uh, people aren't super prepared for it generally, and they tend to inevitably get hit by AoE, uh, no matter how well you try to communicate it. It's just, it's definitely a little bit difficult. Uh, when you're not in voice comms to communicate things quickly. Yes. As you can see, um, I tried to get the first mage there, but the hunter got it. I tried to get the second one, but he just got pulled in. Uh, it's the thought that counts, right guys? The only thing we use on this boss uh, is Lust. But as you can see, we still have Temporal Displacement for 25 seconds, so we are not able to Lust this yet. Uh, we're moving a little too quickly, which is never a bad thing, uh, but it does sometimes mess up our Lust timings a little bit. As you can see, that mage definitely got some Frostbolt volleys off. We did attempt to CC it, but it was broken. Um, I committed a Divine Hymn to that, just because uh, it does do quite a bit of damage, for sure. We uh, finally get Lust up here with 44% left on the boss, so it'd be a nice way to just push that last half of his health through. Getting my second boon in. I know that healer DPS uh, can be a big thing and people look for it, but your number one responsibility is going to be keeping your group alive. You can see the mage definitely uh, got trucked there by some frostbolt volleys. We really should be getting more interrupts on the necrotic bolt from the boss. Um, 
as you can see, the only person's cooldown that is on cooldown, or only person's interrupt that is on cooldown is our tanks. You can see that in the left hand side of the screen here. Our hunter got one out, so that's good. Um, one thing to note, um, if the boss goes to cast Final Harvest and there's any adds up, you will wipe. However, if they are up and you know you can't kill them, if they are CC'd, they will not wipe you. And that can include anything from um, Shackle Undead, Hunter Traps, as well as like Incapacitating Roar from a Druid will also do it. Um, so as long as they're CC'd to the capacity of not being able to do anything, they won't blow up and kill your group. So that's something um, that if you have access to any of those abilities to keep in mind uh, should that happen with your group. You can definitely, definitely save a pull that way. These spare parts are very annoying. They don't really have a threat table. They just run around and smack people. Luckily, they don't have a tremendous amount of health, but they do hit fairly hard. It's kind of annoying. As you can see here, we got the relics without the pack that they were with. Um, that wasn't intentional, uh, but not unwelcome. So now we're going to be able to get the herb buff here and uh, pull in this pack here in the corner. Our uh, tank is orbing, and he has uh, incarnation up, so he's pretty invincible. You really have to keep eyes on the corpse collectors. Uh, they cast a uh, drain fluid, and they also cast something called gore splatter. It does a ton of damage. It absolutely needs to be interrupted. It can be stunned and it can be interrupted. Uh, if you are a holy priest, chastise will interrupt it. Um, it puts a disease dot on everyone, so you can dispel it, but it puts it on everyone, so you can only dispel it one at a time. And it, It's very liable, particularly on fortified weeks and higher keys, to one-shot your group. So make sure that that never, ever, ever gets off. You can see the Flesh Crafters do an ability called Throw Cleaver. You really don't want that to hit a player. However, you can direct it through other mobs, and it will do significant damage to those mobs. So you want to try to, to get that Cleaver through other mobs, if at all possible. Or you can be silly like me and just try to stand in it. But our, our tank uh, intercepted that for me. That's kind of the other option if you don't have any immunities or defensives up and you really know you can't take it and there's no mobs up. Uh, kite it through your tank. It won't kill them. Generally. I'm sure in very high keys, you might not want to do that. But at this key level, it's perfectly safe to do so. Making sure I get my Divine Star out there. Like I said, that's a pretty good chunk of AoE damage. You can see the uh, mage get hit by that there. He really should have ice blocked that if he wasn't going to move, but it's all right. We survived. <laughs> That Spine Crush can be stunned. Um, it's pretty useful if you can get a stun on that so your, your melee doesn't have to lose any uptime um, on the mob. But if uh, that doesn't happen, then for sure uh, run out. That will one-shot you. So this one also has a corpse collector in the pack. You know, make sure you get gore splatter there. The big guy casts something called tenderize on your tank, uh, which does stack 
and it can become quite dangerous. Um, a helpful thing to keep in mind here, if you happen to be a class with a taunt or a pet taunt or anything like that, or uh, druid trees, for instance, is really helpful. Um, our tank doesn't have a problem with it. He's a bear and they're extremely tanky. And they're also pretty quick um, to get away, especially our tank's playing Night Face, so Soul Shape is available to him. Uh, but you might want to communicate with your tank to find out if he might perhaps uh, want to taunt to get those stacks off. Um, for instance, when Walker Monk, you know, you can taunt and then, you know, roll away real quick or, you know, kite backwards, anything like that. Anything to help your tank perhaps drop tank drop stacks of that when they get into a spooky situation. Um, our mage was focused there by the stitching assistant and uh, thought he had blink up and did not, so he got uh, one shot. <laughs> The cleavers that these guys do will, if you point them at each other, they will hook each other and prevent them from uh, like fixating another player. Otherwise, you have to kite away from them. And they do have very long arms, uh, so they can reach you from quite a distance. They're very deadly. This mob has a tenderize he puts on the tank. Uh, which again is just that stacking physical damage that you uh, might want to help kite if, if your tank gets into some trouble there. Um, he also does a thing called gut slice, which is a frontal. It's completely avoidable. It's got quite a long cast. If you are in melee, you want to make sure uh, to get out of that. It's, it's not a nice bleed. It's pretty gnarly. Can pretty easily kill people uh, on high fortified keys. And it's, it's undue stress from your healer. It's pretty easy to avoid it. It's an arc in front of them, and it's got pretty significant cast time. As you can see, our tank uh, soul shaped there and, and blinked away to kind of get out of range there, so we didn't get into any trouble. Our friend Rotspew here likes to, uh, he also, of course, does the requisite mutilate stacks on the tank. Can't forget that. Um, and on the DPS, he'll put down uh, these pools. They're pretty gross. Uh, they, they're they unavoidable, uh, sadly. At least as far as I know. Uh, perhaps feign death or something like that may be able to prevent them but once you're targeted it doesn't really matter where you go they, they seem to drop them but if anybody has any tips for if that's potentially avoidable uh, let me know because I'm not quite aware of any at this moment in time So for this boss, um, we do not use Lust on. We tend to use uh, my orb and then at least one spear. And then what we do is we kind of feel out where we're at. And if it looks like we're getting into a little spooky trouble, we'll use uh, a second spear for this boss. Um, this boss you really can't make a mistake or it's pretty much over. If you miss a hook, it's no bueno. These, the creations that come out uh, do quite a bit of damage to both the tank and uh, there's an aura that goes out that starts ticking on your group that becomes very quickly unhealable. So you really want to make sure you never miss these meat hooks here. You know, we have two creations out now, but the first one's almost dead. He dies really quickly, and we're still in a pretty pretty comfortable place here. We're only a minute into the fight. Um, this meat hook, I'm trying to make sure I, I get the boss so that it stops the morbid fixation. 
this prevents you from having to run uh, too long. It was on me, uh, so it's not really a huge DPS loss for me to have to kite, but you want to avoid your DPS having to kite because it is, you know, a DPS loss for, for a lot of classes to have to do that and really don't want to do that. But got him down in under a minute and a half, so really can't complain. So now for the last boss, we have one spear, three hammers, and bloodlust. You want to use the hammers to break the shields. Particularly when you have a DPS that's downstairs. So there's only four of you up top. Shields out. It's doing pulsing damage. You're kiting. It's just there's a lot of DPS downtime uh, on this boss for sure. So using it on the Icebound Aegis is definitely the play. Something to keep in mind though. The Icebound Aegis is cast right before the Comet Storm comes out. So you really have to make sure that you get the hammer off before that happens. Uh, getting hit by one of those swirls will kill you. Almost always. <laughs> uh, the timer, though, at least in Little Wigs, I'm assuming Big Wigs is similar for the cast of the Icebound Aegis, is very, very accurate. Um, and there is a travel time on the hammer, so you can see it being cast start casting your hammer and it will land on the boss right as the shield goes up and break instantly and you won't take any of that uh, pulsing damage from it. Mage gets clapped here. It is okay. We have a battle rest for him, getting fortitude back out on him just to give him a little bit more health to work with. Making sure to, that everybody's out of his circle before dispelling him. Last thing you want to do is get everyone frozen. I uh, use Guardian Spirit here on myself when casting that hammer because I uh, had a very strong feeling I was going to get hit by one of those swirlies, and I was right. Uh, kept me safe there. Getting some boon time in. This boss has a... He has quite a bit of health, and there's a lot of DPS downtime due to the shields, and they're basically always being one DPS downstairs. Uh, he can take quite a while. He's kind of a troll of a boss in the sense that his mechanics are very simple. He's not in himself very deadly, but this fight can go on for quite a long time. I remember in Season 1, the very first 19 we did in Season 1, we got to this boss with six and a half minutes left, and we couldn't kill him in time. Um... That was before we had a weapon strategy. We were just kind of uh, YOLOing it, which uh, it's not the play. Having a great weapon strategy can really turn this dungeon around into pretty much a gimme. Making sure I get my uh, Shadow or Death off there. Obviously don't Shadow or Death if you're in a Scary situation yourself. I have killed myself uh, in Aspires, I believe it was. Get to the end of this, and uh, it's a nice two chest. I got 12 points from that. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a pretty good run. Went pretty well, all things considered. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I would absolutely love it if you would uh, follow me on Twitch, like and subscribe on YouTube, all that good stuff. Uh, hope to talk to you soon. All right, bye.